You know who I think doesn't get enough love? I'm talking about the guys who have already established themselves as key members of the Montreal Canadiens, and in particular, there's one name I wanted to focus on, and that guy is Nick Suzuki. Now, Suzuki is a guy who we've been loving a whole bunch throughout the past calendar year and a half, pretty much making YouTube videos, talking about his progress, and noting his success with the main club. But this video is more of an appreciation video more than anything. I just wanted to take a step back, especially with the topic that we're talking about here today based off of Claude Julien and his comments, and I just wanted to be happy. Take a look at Nick Suzuki and be happy with everything that he has accomplished and everything that we can be excited for in the future. This is a Nick Suzuki appreciation video, and we're starting off by going over the story here. So, on TVA Sports, there was this article talking about Claude Julien and his decision on Nick Suzuki. The opening paragraph of the article reads this. Nick Suzuki was only nine years old when Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin first held the Stanley Cup above their arms. Eleven years later, the Ontarian will have the mission to face one of the two phenomenal players of the Penguins during the qualifying round. And it talks mostly about Claude Julien and his confidence in Suzuki. We've noted this in a few videos in the past few weeks, but when it comes to shutting down Crosby and Malkin, Claude Julien has noted Nick Suzuki as one of the guys who he's putting his faith in to do that. Now, I don't want to imply that anybody is saying that Suzuki is as good as Crosby or Malkin are. No, that's not what we're saying here. And sure, the status quo of the team may just default to having Nick Suzuki as one of the guys to go up against Crosby or Malkin, but the fact is, Claude Julien has expressed his utmost belief that Nick Suzuki will at least be able to hold his ground, and that is a testament to just how positively he thinks of this player. The article talks about how Nick Suzuki was initially used pretty much everywhere in the Canadiens lineup early on. Right wing, fourth line, all these bouncing around the lineup situations that we saw with Nick Suzuki, and for the most part, it wasn't surprising. He was a guy who, even though he was great, he was still a young guy in a brand new NHL team. But eventually, number 14 ended up securing his spot at the second line center position. And now with the Montreal Canadiens practice lines looking like Deneau is the first line center, Suzuki on the second line center, Code Kanyemi third, and Domi as the fourth line center, man, that's a lot of faith being put onto the younger guys by Claude Julien. Suzuki is only 20 years old and he's already the guy that, along with Philippe Deneau, is going to be challenged with Malkin and or Crosby. I don't think too much about it, Suzuki says. I've always been a center. I've always wanted to face and play well against the best centers of other teams. I want to take it to the next level, and I have to prove that I can hold myself against players of their caliber. And I love that work ethic. We talked about a similar kind of thing with Alexander Romanov, how he is most definitely willing to play in the AHL because he doesn't want to take any shortcuts and he wants to do everything necessary to show that he is an NHL worthy player and how he wants to build towards being the best version of that NHL ready player. Suzuki has somewhat of a similar work ethic, where he wants to go up against the best of the best to show that he can compete. And for a 20-year-old guy who's brand new to the league, I love seeing that kind of work ethic. In fact, Claude Julien noted that Nick Suzuki reminds him of Brad Marchand and the way Marchand came into the league. Take a look at this. This is a quote from the TVA Sports article. Honestly, I don't remember when in the year I thought Suzuki was more of a center. We chose to adjust with it as we went. For Nick, it was part of the evolution of a young player to play on the right wing of a fourth line. We've seen that often. Brad Marchand was on the right wing of our fourth line at the start of the year when the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. In the end, Marchand was playing with Bergeron and Mark Recchi. And for the Habs fans watching this video, I guess talking about Boston in 2011 kind of makes you cringe, not just because they won the Stanley Cup against my favorite team, the Vancouver Canucks, 
but also that same Bruins team happened to eliminate the Habs in the first round in a best of seven series. Seriously, if Montreal just won that game seven, the entire 2011 finals would have been crazy different. Maybe it would have been Vancouver against Tampa Bay, and if it was that, I believe the Vancouver Canucks would have won. I'm not sitting here just compensating my inner feelings because I feel very hurt from 2011. Seriously, ah, that sucks. But the Brad Marchand comparison is a very, very interesting one because Marchand was a guy who took a long time to develop before actually becoming an NHL caliber player. He was drafted a long time before actually making the Boston Bruins full time in the 2006 NHL entry draft. From there, he spent some time with the Bruins, with the Providence Bruins, with the Halifax Mooseheads, but it was that 2011 season where he really broke out into an NHL caliber forward. 41 points in 77 games played and 19 points in 25 games in the playoffs that year when they won the cup. And it was only looking up for Brad Marchand from there. In 2011, Brad Marchand was 23 years old, so he took a much longer time to develop from becoming a prospect to an actual Bruins player than Nick Suzuki did. Suzuki completely skipped over that AHL process in general and jumped straight to the NHL from junior. The other quote from Claude Julien says this, it fits into the evolution of a player. If a player shows good progress, we will make adjustments to help him and use it within a better line. At the start, we knew Nick could play center or wing. Even though we trusted him on the wing, that didn't mean we didn't believe in his potential as a center. In October, we had Deneau, Domi, Kotkaniemi, and Thompson at center. He played his first wing games, only to find himself in the center position later. Now, it's in this position that we see him, and he should stay there. And stay there he most likely would. According to Nick Suzuki himself, Crosby and Malkin have been elite players for a very long time, and he's always watched their games. He knows it's going to be a tough series, and in his first game against the Penguins, he was following them on the ice when he was on the bench. But once on the ice, he wanted to forget about it and concentrate on his own game. Now, it doesn't take a genius to say that Nick Suzuki is right and that Crosby and Malkin are elite players, but I love that little detail that he threw in there. The last time they played, Nick Suzuki on the bench was tracking Crosby and Malkin, watching what they were doing, and just internalizing the game that they were playing. As a student of the game, you get better by absorbing the knowledge and the processes of those who are better than you. And for Nick Suzuki, watching and taking in that information is certainly something that I like to see personally as a fan of learning in general and people who like to learn. So for Nick Suzuki here as a guy who wasn't even drafted by the Habs, you gotta remember, he was one of the first players taken by the Vegas Golden Knights in their entry draft, the second actually after Cody Glass. And as a guy who was acquired alongside of Tatar in that Max Pacioretty trade, there certainly is so much to be in love with with this kind of player. There's so much to see for the future. And as a guy who had improved so much year after year in the OHL from the Owen Sound attack to the Guelph Storm, there's a lot to take a look at and be happy to see. Even back when he was a Golden Knights prospect, I remember when two of my buddies, Louis VGK Hockey Coverage and Andy LaHou from NHL Draft Central, or excuse me, he's from Future Considerations Now, I remember when they collabed and they made a Nick Suzuki scouting report all the way back in 2018? Maybe it was a little bit earlier in 2019, but it was before the Nick Suzuki trade to the Montreal Canadiens, and I was absolutely in love with this kind of player back then too. A shifty, center, right wing player who who can do a lot of really nice things with the puck and who developed his two-way game and defensive coverage in his Guelph Storm OHL championship year. Now, all of a sudden, a year later, he's going up against Crosby and Malkin in the play-in series? Now, of course, I'm the guy who's been saying this entire time, I don't care if the Canadians win or if they lose, because either way, there's a lot to look forward to on that front. If they win, I can make more YouTube videos on the playoffs, and I can watch them in the playoffs. If they lose, there's that one and eight shot at Lafreniere. Or maybe even Byfield or Stutzla, who knows. But... Of course, there still is so much to look forward to with the future of these Montreal Canadiens players, and Nick Suzuki following the similar path of Brad Marchand 
is certainly one of the guys who's leading the charge in that department. So talk to me in the comments below what you thought about this video here today. Talk to me in the comments about Nick Suzuki and his upwards progression. Are you as big of a fan as I am, or are you just taking a look at this like Lego? Please stop talking about this. Let's talk about Caulfield. So let me know all that stuff in the comments below, but I hope you enjoyed this video. So that's Rosa 99, and bye.